chapter 5, 16, we don't refer to each other according to the flesh any further. We refer to each other according to the Spirit. The Apostle Paul doesn't like using the word dying. He says we go to sleep. In fact, we don't die. The soul will never die. But the biological flesh was sown in corruption. And that's why it goes back to the earth. But one day it will be raised in incorruption. And then you'll be in the presence of your Savior, Christ Jesus. We know redemption was accomplished on the cross for all. But we know it's only applied to those who believe. To those who come to him in faith. The just shall live by faith, right? The righteousness of God is revealed from heaven above in Christ Jesus. So we'll read a few verses and then we'll pray, and then we'll sing the doxology. Uh, Damon, you're not supposed to raise your hand in church. Oh, no, I always carry two pairs. He brought in my glasses this morning. I know better, I bring two pairs. Yeah, yeah, that's okay, we'll get them later then. But thanks for thinking of that. All right, well with that, we'll go to the scripture. has to do with the Godhead and the fullness of it. You're all familiar with this in Colossians. Um, but there's, there's, basically, there's basically three ways that God reveals himself. Um, well, there are more. There are more. But basically three ways. He reveals himself in the glory of his creation. Right? And we all call that natural revelation. Plain revelation. Yeah, general revelation. And that's given to everybody. Is that enough to save you? Well, it can put you on a path to salvation. It, 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 it can start there. But when it comes to the perfection of the written word, it's the word that became flesh and walked among us, right? 
We all know John 1.14, right? He tabernacled among us. And we're here without our king and without our savior. And our king is coming back. He promised. And it's, it's, it's impossible for him to break his promise. So we're looking forward to that day. But the righteousness of, of God is revealed from faith to faith. Now we know that changed Martin Luther's life, right? Um, Romans 1, 16 or 17. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. And so he talks about from faith to faith. Well, one has to have faith, right? And we could argue the point, does regeneration precede faith, or is it the other way around? Well, I'm not going to argue that today. You know, I'm getting tired of that argument. I'm getting tired of that debate. You know, all these guys, James White and all these guys, I like all these guys. They know the word and they study the word. But faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And it comes by conviction. And so we know that Jesus made three promises, that he would convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. But with that, we'll read just a few scriptures in Colossians 1.19. It said, For it pleased the Father that in him, in him, all the fullness should dwell. Now, there's a, you'll hear all kinds of uh, different preaching on this. So what's the fullness? It's, it's, it's the Godhead. And you say, well, how do you know that? Well, we know Colossians 2, 9. 90% of the time, the scripture is its best commentary. And that's what we go by here. That's why we're called Brentford Bible Church. Yes, the Bible, right? We all know what it stands for, right? The B-I-B-L-E. Well, it's basic instruction before leaving earth, but then it becomes biblical instruction before leaving earth. But the Apostle Paul says, now this has to do with reconciling all things. Now, he's in the process of doing it. But he says, For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself. How do you explain that? He's going to reconcile all the good and bad. Well, we'll talk about that later. But he's going to do it. It says, By him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through his blood. The blood of his cross, right? That's where the atonement is. He says, and we who once were alienated and enemies in the minds by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled. He's reconciled the believer to himself. And he has more. And the door is still open. But I think the time is coming close. We're seeing apostasy. I know Apostle Paul talks about it in his time 2,000 years ago. We know 2 Thessalonians and, uh, in chapter 2 and the man of uh, apostasy and the son of perdition. I think what was taking place in Chicago, I mean, we're seeing things we never saw before. I don't want to beat all that up, but there's just so much happening. And we got to be ready. But with that, we have to pray. And Father, we want to thank you, Lord. We thank you for Christ Jesus. We thank you that he was willing to die. We thank you that he was faithful to you in all things. And we thank you, Father, that he's coming back. Amen. And so, Lord, we look forward to that. We look forward to the redemption of the body, Lord. Father, we look forward to being with you. And one day, you will make all things right. But until then, may we remain faithful in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen.